Hey, welcome to another Beyond Baseball Shorts. As always, I'm your host, Jared Perkins, and I'm here with a very special guest, Evan Gates, right-handed pitcher with the San Francisco Giants. Uh, Evan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I am ecstatic to be on this. Um, I'm glad you guys reached out and you know, just having, having a great day. And this is this definitely a good nightcap for me right here. Yeah, well, we're really excited to have you on. Um, so just for the viewers who don't know you, just give a little bit of background about who you are, um, how you made your journey to the San Francisco Giants and into pro ball. Most definitely. Well, you know, I, I'm in a cool position, so I always got to start off by, you know, you want to learn a little bit about me. You know, I'm a believer, so thank God for getting me here. I'm um, just thankful that, you know, I get to talk to people like you and be in clubhouses and playing stadiums across the nation. You know, I've definitely blessed with an opportunity and, and an ability to get there. So always, always praise the Lord. So from there, man, I'll just say uh, a couple times I was asked this question this year, too, because it feels kind of weird. I, I felt like I was kind of like written off this past year, especially with the way my first year of pro ball went and coming from a small town and going to JUCO and just a small like division one. Um, I felt like people kept asking me, like, oh, well, like, tell us about your journey this past year. Like, what'd you do different? And so, I mean, just putting a lot of work throughout the years. You know, I loved football. I wanted to play college football so bad. But at the end of the day, I wasn't getting the offers that I wanted. So I had to choose a baseball route. And now, you know, the decision I made at, like, 18 years old now has gotten me here at 24. And I'm on an interview talking to a guy who put on an amazing – article I got to read on myself so it's been it's been a fun ride um this year was definitely way better than I expected it to be I got to meet a lot of cool people I got to play in a lot of cities and it really just is a dream come true and I'm like I said I'm just truly blessed and thankful to do what I get to do yeah, I love that article that Tieran did of you. That just kind of dove in and the like, deep dive into the statistics mm -hmm. and analytics on your stuff, um, which we can get into a little bit. Um, but talk about coming from the small school aspect. So everybody's got, the one thing I love about baseball is everybody's kind of got a different journey to get there. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to go to the big D one school to make it in the major leagues. Um, talk about your path going to community college, the experiences that you had there, and what left you kind of choosing to North Carolina A and T. Yeah, so. Uh... You know, going going junior college, I I just fell in love with it because I had a bunch of friends that went junior college. They went to a couple bigger ones in the state, and they said they loved it and said, "Hey, it's a good opportunity for you to, you know, go play the game." And I mean, let's just be real; like financially, it was perfect. I mean, I'm getting yeah. pretty much free schooling and not paying a boatload of money for the first two years at least. So, got the JUCO, but I think what really taught me there was it's just a grind. Anyone yeah. that's been through the JUCO life or anyone that you've probably interviewed has said the same thing. Like, it is not easy. And I definitely think those two years of grinding out at a JUCO made, like, some minor league struggles. Like, hey, this is nothing. Like, you've done it before. Like, like get there again. And, you know, I think that also allowed me to just take a step back and not chase that big D1 offer. Um, Obviously, everyone wants to play D1 because that's where the, the best ability is at in college baseball and where most guys get picked up. But you know, even small ones are super competitive. Like we, I got to face a couple teammates, you know, in the Giants organization that were NC State, and we always competed with them or North North Carolinas. So, um, I checked all the boxes that I was looking for out of junior college to go there, and like I said, it, it worked out because I got to go there for three years, got my degree pretty much paid for in, in full, and again got to meet a bunch of great guys and play in some big games and have a lot of fun. And ultimately, that was just you know another step for me to get where I'm at today and then play pro ball. So I think it definitely helped going through a smaller school. So I don't have that big expectation of, you know, I want to get to the big lights and all that. It's like, no, I just yeah. want to play ball. You know, I just want to have fun and just play for to play with the boys and, and win as many games as possible. Yeah. I loved how you talked about how community college set you up for pro ball. Cause we, back in when I was, our, when I worked for a major league universe, we had the opportunity to interview the university of Georgia head coach. And he was like, I tell all my guys, when you go to pro ball, it sucks. You don't, you mm -hmm. not, shouldn't expect anything that you have here at the university of Georgia. You got the nice locker rooms, the nice field, mm -hmm. all the gear, things like that. But he was like, when you get to pro ball, it's, it's a grind. It's bus trips everywhere. Oh yeah. And then I think, you know, I'm repping them today. On the, on the show, I, I played in Northwoods League too, so summer ball. Oh, yeah. And it would be, you know, two day road trips or play two games road trip, another road trip. So that definitely is, uh, I guess, you know, you got to love the grit. And if it's there, go, go chase it because the minors is definitely, definitely a grind. Yeah, I love it. Um, so now that you've had a lot of success in this 2022 season, what, what are some of the things you're, you've gone to this offseason in terms of getting yourself ready for 2023, not just on the field, but what are some things that you're doing outside of baseball um, that you're just doing for fun this offseason? Most definitely. So, uh, you know, I was talking, I had a meeting last week with, with the Giants and 
know, they pretty much said, Hey, whatever you did, like, just do it again, you know, like, <laughs> like stick with whatever workouts we're working. And like, we trust you that, you know, we know you, you're a grinder. So just do what you need. That's best as we know what you're doing, what's best for you. It's going to be best for us. But man, outside of that, um, I just got an invite to the big 10 championship games. So I'm going to head there. You know, cool. I, I love, like I said, I love football, so I have to go there, but, and, you know, having fun. Um, catching up in my reading when it was warm enough, I was golfing a lot. Uh, I got to go on a couple of vacations out of, out of town, but, you know, just trying to find time to, uh, you know, just enjoy life. I mean, I love the grind. I love working out and all that, but I can't do that all day. So I got to find yeah. things or, you know, I stress like, well, it's today's Monday. It's fantasy, you know, manager Monday, <laughs> thinking about who I could have played last week. So I've been stressing about that, but you know, that's always fun. And that's a big thing too. And I feel like minor league baseball, having that group chat and staying in touch with those guys throughout the year. So, yeah. What's the fantasy football record? Uh, six and six in both leagues. So it's playoff, uh, it's bound, our, or? <laughs> it's playoff bound for sure. And one, the other one, we, we got to grind. So I got to go through a little gauntlet these next two weeks. Give them all a locker room talk. Just get them. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you talked about the Big Ten Championship. Who you got? I assume Michigan. Yeah, I'll that... take Michigan all day. Yeah, they got Purdue, I think, right? Isn't that yes, the, Purdue. the matchup? Yes, Purdue. 17-point favorites, and I don't think it's enough for them. Like, that team, no. what they showed last week, is it's impressive. They just destroyed Ohio State. So Feels good when you're a Michigan <laughs> fan and you see that. It, yeah. it was a great day. You know, Michigan won, Ohio State lost, Michigan State lost, Notre Dame lost. I mean, you can't draw anything better than that if you're a Michigan yeah. fan. Yeah, uh, well, that's awesome. It's cool to see you have some passions away from the game that you're going to go to uh, outside of the field. Um, the other question, too, I have on your journey uh, going through baseball. Um, I think everybody will talk about the relationships they've built and the mentorships that they've had along the journey. Do you have some key people who have been like really been there for you um, as you made this journey to professional baseball? Oh, most definitely. Um, I mean, roommates are like the first and foremost. Um you know, I'm going to name them because I think they're going to be watching this. So, you know, Jack, Jeremiah, Baber, that's my 3J guys for life. And then, um, I'm sorry, it was Jeremiah, Justin, and Baber, my 3J. And then Jack was my uh, <laughs> Juco roommate. You know, I've had so many of them living in all these yeah. places. But those guys are big. Um, my manager in, in Traverse City, he, he, was, he was a big impact in my life. You know, he helped lead me to Jesus a little bit more. And he actually was the one that but baptized me. So that was really that's cool. Funny. I got a great relationship with him. And then... Uh, really just, you know, all, all my coaches I have in, in a junior college, like those guys, you know, they, they bought in for to me, like they gave me a chance first and obviously the guys, ANC the same with them. So those guys always will, you know, have a special, special place in my heart. And you know, just, like I said, when you go through the grind with these guys, it's, it just hits different. Yeah. I, I liked too, how you kind of touched on faith. Cause that's something we touch on in the longer version episodes, because mm -hmm. a lot of the focus is players searching for their identity outside of the game. And a lot of them talked, uh, Caleb did a study figuring out what helped people find their identity outside of the game. He's mm -hmm. it's just through his professorship. And he found that, um, faith was like the one thing that it was so in, interdependent on each individual. Can you kind of talk about how that's kind of helped you find your identity outside of baseball? Oh, yeah, for sure. So I feel like getting away from, from home, you know, I felt like a little lonely. You know, mm -hmm. I'm around a bunch of guys that I never met before. Like, I think it's, I tell these kids that I train now, like, listen, you're going to get to college and you're going to be handed 30 friends. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're not lonely. So I, I really started, you know, diving into, you know, I grew up, you know, going to church and all that, but I felt like hey, there's something bigger than this. And, you know, I started seeking a relationship with the Lord and I've been growing ever since. And, just to see like when just trying to dive into that and understanding like our chaplain in uh, Arizona, you know, he says like, don't forget like whose you are. Don't forget who you are and whose you are. And that's definitely resonated with me. You know, like at the end of the day, like I can only play for so long, yeah. but it's like, what kind of impacts can, can you have on teammates? Like what kind of like real relationships can you build outside of just teammates? So like this past year, we, we had some Bible studies together. And I thought it was just cool because I got to learn these guys for more than just their baseball player. You know, I got to learn like who they were as people. So, so growing through that, it was, it was really cool. And just like, I think, you know, time's a big thing. So these, these six years, I've really started to learn like, like who I am and like where I put my trust and, and really just going out and handling my business and knowing that God will do whatever his will may be for my life. And it's just cool that now I am living in that will and, and it feels like it's definitely gone in the direction that I wanted to, but I feel like that he wanted to as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's awesome. And the one thing that you really touched on that stuck out to me is you touched on how it's helped you build relationships. And when we interviewed Jacob Turner, uh, he touched on, he's like, the one thing I learned from baseball um, was the importance of relationships. He goes, because the game's going to go away, but the, the relationships you build with people, he goes, those are going to last forever. And he goes, it's not about your status. It doesn't matter how far you make it in the league. He goes, those relationships are still going to be there. Most definitely. Yeah. I think there's also like, you know, one more key relationship that I forgot to actually touch on when you asked. And, you know, I, I wanted to get signed in 2020, the COVID year. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to and I didn't. And I happened to get signed in 21. And I'm glad I'm there because, you know, I met my girlfriend in 21 mm. when I was out in Arizona. Yeah. And like, that's one huge relationship part that if it wasn't for baseball, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would ever met her, you know, so everything's working out the way it's supposed to. So I that's have awesome. to shout her out because I forgot. that's <laughs> that's my number one one in the relationship part. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, just so diving into the last couple of questions here, I guess the one thing I'm always asking guys, what's the go to restaurant as soon as you get home in the off season that you got to hit up every time? Thank you for asking that. It's definitely Coney <laughs> Island. Coney mm. Island all day. The Zeno, it ain't the same. You can find Coney's in other places and yeah. in America, maybe, but nothing beats it back at home. That's awesome. And what do they have? I'm assuming hot dogs, right? Just Yeah, they do the chili yeah. dogs and all that. But I just go there for the breakfast because they got the, the big breakfast special. Or if you go for lunch, they got these honeys that are amazing. So Love it. Love it. Um, so the last question I always wrap up with, um, as we, we want this show to be awesome for viewers to, like, to get the behind the scenes look between for uh, fans, but we also want it to be a way to teach and help uh, the future generation of uh, athletes making it to pro ball. So if you had like, one piece of advice um, for any guy that's trying to come from the high school level, the community college level, and just trying to make their way in baseball, but also kind of find their identity outside of the game, what would that be? I love that that question because it's something that I, uh, you know, I train kids during the week and mm. I tell them this, I tell them this often. And I think it, it's kind of because this is kind of what I went through with my journey. And it was just like, don't give up, you know, because yeah. I could have, you know, my first year at JUCO didn't go so well, but I was like, no, like I want to be good. So I grinded sometimes in college ball didn't go well. Just felt like I kept pursuing something that maybe others would look at like, dude, this guy's crazy. Like he's not gonna, he's not really gonna make it. Like he's not that good. And But in my heart, I knew I'm like, hey, like just keep going, just keep yeah. working. The grind never cheats you. And that, that's what I tell them. Like the grind will never cheat you. If you put in the time, you put in the effort and you truly care, like you will find ways to, to make it happen and, and people rely on you too. So that's, that's, that's my uh, advice to all those kids. Like, Hey, don't ever stop grinding. And even if you gave it your all and you don't reach to the highest level, like it's okay to be a good college pitcher. Yeah. It's okay if you, you know, because that's going to carry over now into other things in life. And then ultimately like we hope that it turns in or carries over to you being a good man, you know, being a good family man and, and leading something in, in that direction. So always yeah. just gotta keep going i love that because you can tell that you're grounded in things outside of the game because if you have that mindset of just to keep going and just focusing on where you're at and just being okay with where you're at like whether that's getting to the college level or that's making it to the next level and just keep pursuing it like you're going to find success and you're going to be able to find those next steps to move forward um so i think that's awesome most definitely and when like i said when failure comes too like it's it's supposed to come yeah this stuff ain't easy life ain't easy baseball ain't easy i don't care what you do it nothing's easy so it allows yeah. you to just, you know, handle that adversity and use it to build you. I guess that's my other tidbit of event or <laughs> advice. Don't let the adversity break you. Let it build you. What yeah, I love that. I think that's a good one to end on. And Evan, we can't thank you enough for joining us. You're an awesome guy. Uh, we're wishing you nothing but success in 2023 and can't wait to see you out there again. Thank you very much for, for having me and letting me share a little bit on myself, too. I appreciate you guys.